Eric B's Daily Vlogs. All right, another daily vlog, but this time again in the podcast studio, and if you guys can see the background that I have right now, we're going to touch on the Eternals. Now, this is something I normally do with the Ordinary Joe's podcast, but if you guys follow me and listen to the podcast that I did not that long ago, I talked about how Joe's having computer issues, so we're going to do this solo. We're flying solo. I do have the green screen going on. I have the Eternals in the background, and if you could look right up there, you have my little Eric B's Daily Vlogs. So without further ado, let's get this started. <laughs> interrupt our program to bring you this important message welcome everyone it's my daily vlogs channel eric b's daily vlogs eternals did you guys watch the eternals and what did you think about it i this is the new phase of the marvel movie for me um and it was kind of hard not seeing like a iron man or you know chris evans are we doing the chris evans things again if you guys watched my live stream every time someone mentioned chris evans What's going on? There's like a whistle going on. I guess, you know, that's why they call him Chris Evans. Captain America. America's ass. Right? And yeah. Anyways, today we're going to break down the Eternals. We're going to talk about the Eternals. We're going to talk about the movie and tell me what you guys thought about the movie. But before we do that, we're going to check out the trailer. So if you guys haven't watched the movie, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. I said it four times. Spoiler alert, that's the fourth time right there. Spoiler alert, that's the fifth time right there. Spoiler alert. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch scenes. We're going to see me right in the corner. There I go right in the corner. You got the big play button going on. And we are going to watch the preview or the trailer of The Eternals. Five years ago, Thanos erased half of the population of the universe. But the people of this planet brought everyone back with a snap of a finger. The sudden return of the population provided the necessary energy for the emergence to begin. The emergence. Crazy, right? How long do we have? Seven days. Seven days. We're Eternals. So we came here 7,000 years ago to protect humans from the deviants. Why didn't you guys help fight Thanos or any war or all the other terrible things throughout history? We were instructed not to interfere in any human conflicts unless deviants are involved. By who? The Celestial. We need to find the others. I haven't seen some of them for centuries. Hi. Hello. Hello. This is what the end of the world looks like. At least we have front row seats. You know what's never saved the planet? Your sarcasm. Chloe Zhao. We have loved these people since the day we arrived. When you love something, you protect it. Kit Harrington. Wow. Mm. Wow. I bet you've built the perfect safe house. Well, what's this even made of? Vibranium? Fall collection. Ikea. 
All right, that that's pretty much the trailer. I'm going to switch back to my normal scene, which is me right there. I do have a copy of, we're going to, if I want to pop the preview up again, it's going to be right there in the corner on my right, my left. I, I it's, Everything's all turned off. But what do you guys think? If you guys watch The Eternals, what do you guys think? It was a different cast. Um, now, remember, we spent, how many years did we spend watching a Marvel movie seeing the same group of Marvel cast. And when I say the same group, I'm talking about Chris Evans. Don't know where, who's doing that. Chris Evans, um, Iron Man, Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr. So we've seen them in all the movies that we've, we've seen in the Marvel movie. Now we're watching a new Marvel movie, a new MCU with a new group of people, right? Um, you know, yet... Peter Parker and Spider-Man's coming out in December. Hope you guys got your tickets. You guys watch can watch my full breakdown of the Spider-Man trailer. I'll leave the links down below. But Eternals, totally different movie, right? Totally different concept. And the fact where where um, Gemma Chan's character, Circe, says, we were instructed not to interfere with any humans because it's their only way to thrive. So if you watch the movie, they did say that. Uh, Selma Hayek says that, that, you know, the only way human populations would, ev would evolve is if they actually figure things out on their own. So like in the beginning of the movie, it was action packed right away. I thought, seriously, I thought it was going to be boring. I thought it was like, oh God, it's going to be this, this storyline where we're going to be sitting here thinking about, um, I'm going to throw some Eternals music in the background. You guys know how I like to do things. Eternals original motion picture soundtrack by Ramin Dejwade. Dejwade? Dejwade or Dejwade? You can find this on Apple Music, Apple Podcast. But yes, so in the beginning of the movie, it started off right away. Like no, no, no boring scenes. The boring scene came towards the middle. So the beginning part of the movie was very action packed. Deviants were brought, brought on Earth and the deviants were here to try to decimate the population right or, or i i guess they brought the deviants in so the human the humans can find a way to thrive and kill them i don't know it was kind of it was kind of this long thing but it's funny because there's this one scene i'm going to play that scene right here let's go pull this scene up when um she talks about thanos let's pause this real quick when selma hayek talks about thanos let me skim that to that part. When she talks about Thanos snapping the finger, and in one snap, he decimated half of the planet, right? Years ago, Thanos erased half of the population of the universe. But the people of this planet brought everyone back with a snap of a finger. See, that key line right there, Thanos snapped half the planet away and in the snap of finger humanity brought everybody back so was thanos did he knew the resurgence was happening did he knew that i got to get rid of half of the populations of the world because if not my this world is going to disappear and again thanos is from space who why did he care about this world why did he care about earth there's something about earth that he cared about, that he had to snap the fingers to get rid of the population. But listen to that again. Thanos erased half of the population of the universe. But the people of this planet brought everyone back with a snap of a finger. So that line right there, that's kind of a line where it's like, okay, so Thanos snapped half the humanity away. And we, humanity, not me, but you know, like the Avengers, found a way to bring everybody back with a snap of a finger, right? So that's what that line is saying. That's what they're saying in that line. Um, an all-star cast. I, I, I like the cast that they had. Um, Icarus, played by Richard Madden from Game of Thrones. Gemma Chan, Cersei, Crazy Rich Asians, and also from, she was also Marvel. She was, a, she was in Captain Marvel, right? She's part of the MCU. Selma Hayek is Ajax. That was a cool one too. Angelina Jolie probably had the best underrated role in the movie. She played Thena, not Athena, Thena. Uh, Kumail Nanjali, 
Got him. Sorry if I'm saying your name. Kamal Gunjani played Kingo. I don't know why Kit, Kit Harrington is on the in the IMDb page that I'm looking at right now. Kit Harrington is above Brian Tyree, Lisa McGew, Lauren Rudolph, and uh, Ma Dong Seo. Ma Dong Seo from uh, Train to Busan. If you guys watched the movie Train to Busan, I don't know why Kit Harrington. Kit Harrington, this character shows up maybe. A few times, but he does have a bigger role. We'll get to that towards the end of of what I'm talking about. But um, he does have a bigger role. But why was he here and why were they talking about or why is he, again, above everybody else? But you have uh, Kid Harrington, who played Daniel Whitman. Uh, Lisa McHugh, who played Sprite. Her character was pretty cool, but she's kind of annoying at the same time. Brian Tyree Henry, who played Fastos. I got something to say about him in a minute uh lauren rudolph who played uh makari she was cool because her character was her character was deaf so it was kind of cool to have that involved um barry kugan who played durig and he had probably one of the coolest eternal powers i don't i don't know if you want to say that but it's pretty cool uh mad dong siok his 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 powers was kind of kind of crazy, but he was cool. He he played um, Gilamesh, and then they brought in a guy, Harish Patel. Shout out to him who played Kuran, who was Kingo's manager, right hand man. So, anyways, so the movie breaks out to you know they're fighting deviants. They they start off like in the BC time, and then the then they they make their way. Um, killed all the deviants and then Selma Hayek Ajax character goes hey you guys are free to go you killed all the deviants you can finally live your life the way you want to live your life so it's like everybody decides to go their separate ways do what they want to do do their thing live their lives right live their lives and remember BC era that's when it all started so now here we are in 2021 and the deviants are back again right deviants are back and then here's the Eternals popping out out of nowhere again Gemma, uh, Gemma Chan's character Cersei is living with Sprite somewhere in London who is she she's dating Kit Harrington's character Dane Whitman and again Dane Whitman if you guys know Marvel Comics later on becomes the Black Knight and he's part of the MCU also so they gave him a small role because he's gonna have a bigger role later on but so that's just you know again spoiler alert alert for you guys who are, who are there but the movie yeah, the movie was really good. There was a lot of cool features about the movie. It made me wonder, you know, Icarus, who played by Richard Madden. And it's funny because Richard Madden, Kit Harrington, they're both Game of Thrones, right? They're both Starks, or Kit Harrington is Snow because he's a bastard child. But he's still a Stark, no matter what. And Gemma Chan's character is Cersei. And if you guys watch Game of Thrones, Cersei, you know, is a Lannister. So to bring the name full circle again in the MCU movie, it's kind of cool. Cool to me, at least. But yeah, the movie starts really slow. I mean, really fast. There was a lot of fighting in the beginning. Um, I think they were like Mesopotamia. Is that is that where they started from? Uh, and they helped. They you know, kind of sort of helped humanity build their way of how humanity is going to become and how humanity is going to be. So in a way, it was kind of cool that they did that. Um, <clears throat> Ajax. Again, played by Selma Hayek, was kind of like the leader. She was like the one that knew it all. And she knew about this resurgence that was going to happen, right? So the way the resurgent works is you have a big celestial. And they show the celestial in the trailer. He's the, the big guy that was in space. And for a, another celestial to be born, there has to be a fluctuation of humanity in a planet, and once they reach that goal, the celestial is born within the planet, so that destroys the planet. Gemma Chan's character, Cersei, fell in love with the people on Earth. Selma Hayek was like, well, you know, this is the first time that I've seen these people on Earth love their planet so much that they brought half of the people back. So when Thanos snapped half the people away that kind of slowed down the resurgence which was kind of cool because they tied everything in right so they're like wow 
This is the reason why Thanos snapped because he wanted, he didn't want any part of the resurgence. He, there must have been something in the backstory that we'll find out later on that Thanos knew that he didn't want to happen. I don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Is, is, is Thanos an eternal? Is, that's what I'm wondering. Is he an eternal? Did he know something that humanity on Earth didn't know? I mean, why else would you want to snap humanity away? He did. He snapped humanity away. Um, and then the Eternals, I mean, then, then the Avengers with Chris Evans finds a way to bring him back, bring everybody back. And then the resurgence happens again, right? So in the movie Eternals, it's kind of like they're trying to stop the resurgence from happening. Actually, there's a few of them that's trying to stop the resurgence from happening. Gemma Chan's character, Cersei, is the one who falls in love with Earth, how Earth is, how the people on Earth is. So she doesn't want anything to happen to the people on Earth. She wants the people on Earth to continue living the way they're living. Where Selma Hayek's character was, she was kind of more put here to like, to make sure the resurgence happened but when she kind of fell, the God Earth found a way to save themselves. The backup plan was Icarus to make sure the Eternals were all taken care of because he wanted to make sure the resurgence was going to happen. And it was kind of weird how they did all that, right? They were just they were just clones. Their characters would go to different parts of the universe have a resurgence in that part, whether it's Earth or Titan. You know, that's another question. Did Titan have a resurgence? You know, if we watch the movie Endgame, they show Titan, or in Infinity War and in Endgame, they show Titan. Did they have a resurgence? Is that what Thanos was trying to stop in Titan? Was he trying to stop any a resurgence? So it's kind of weird because it's like, we see all these things in the comic book. We see all these things that they're bringing up in the comic book. And for them to, again, bring this full circle and to, sh to, to show us why the Eternals, because that was a question everybody had. Why wasn't the Eternals helping the Avengers? Why didn't they help them with Thanos? And then they said because their way of making sure that the humanity can thrive is for them to have to figure things out on their own which i like i totally like i love the fact they have to figure things out on their own because without without that we wouldn't thrive as human beings right we wouldn't so that was a kind of a cool you know homage to the people us have to find a way have to find a way to do the things that we have to do so it was kind of cool i i totally like that but again in the movie the movie was just more the what are we going to do to keep humanity? What are we going to do to keep humanity safe? What are we going to do to keep this planet safe? And I, I love the fact that there was a handful of characters, Cersei, Thena, um, Fastos, uh, Makari, and Druig, who wanted to save Earth. And even um, Gilgamesh, who wanted to save Earth. And you had Icarus, who was like, no, nah, we got we to gotta go with, we gotta go with, with, with what the Celestial says. We have to destroy Earth, or we have to let the resurgence happen so we can move on. Because, you know, you remember, they're living like a hundred thousands of years, right? That, that they've been on Earth for thousands of years, and thousands of years of memories of people that you love that passes away. You'll never die. So Icarus kind of had a point like, dude, I want to be reborn with a different memory. I want I want to re be reborn somewhere else with a different memory. So he kind of had that. It was kind of right. You know, I kind of totally agree. I kind of agreed with him. Kingo was more the, hey man, whatever Icarus wants it. I think Kingo had a man crush on him. So whatever he wanted to do, um, Kingo did. So he's like, yeah, I stand with Icarus yeah, on this one. You know, I'm, I'm going to stand behind him. We can't stop him. So if we can't stop him, I'm not going to try to fight him. 
everybody else, everybody else had Cersei's back, like to try to stop him. Fastos even created the Unimine, the brain, to find, <clears throat> excuse me, to find a way to kill the Celestial um, from resurging, which was kind of cool. And it's funny because a lot of people, a lot of people that I know was like, okay, you, you give me an African American character, Brian, Tyree, Henry. And if you guys watch Godzilla, Kong versus Godzilla, he was the, the podcaster in that one. And then a lot of people, it's kind of weird because a lot of people were, were, were upset that he was a gay African American, but I'm like, dude, he's, he's the reason why they killed the celestial. He found a way to kill the celestial. So I'm more applauding his role as, um, as a gay African American. And I applaud that because that's the, that's the life that we live in right now. Right. We have, you know, you know, gays, whether you're not African American or not, <clears throat> excuse me, something in my throat. So I'm kind of glad they did that. I'm glad they did that. And they made him like, he was the smartest guy there. He was the smartest guy there. He knew where the ship was. He, you know, that scene where at the end of the trailer where he breaks the table, where Icarus breaks the table and says, what's this made out of vibranium? Because he, he made his house like safe. He has a kid in the movie. He has a kid. He has a husband in the movie, which is, again, cool. It's embracing what we are now, the, you know, the 2021 where we are now. They had, they had Lauren Rudolph, who was, who was, I don't want to call her a handicap, but she was deaf. So to add her on there, which is, it's kind of cool because it's like, you don't see that in super. You think of superheroes, you think of someone like Superman that's like, nothing's going to hurt him. Nothing's going to break him down. But when you see characters like this, Sprite was just a little kid. She never aged and she kind of got frustrated with that towards the end. It was kind of cool. I kind of like seeing that. I kind of like seeing that in a movie, especially in a Marvel movie. And it's funny because this Marvel movie, Gemma Chan's character and Richard Madden's character, Cersei and Icarus, ends up becoming a couple. They become a thing, right? And this is the first time in Marvel movie you see some sort of, I don't want to say love making, but they show them in the beginning of the movie consummating the marriage. I mean, they don't show like, you know, it's not like, you know, an X-rated film, but, you know, she's, you know, laying on the ground and he's on top of her. And they, for us, we notice that they don't have clothes on. So the first time we've seen that in the Marvel movie, we've seen kissing. But we've never seen that intimate in a Marvel movie. Never. Never. This is the first time we've seen that. And it was kind of was kind of like, whoa, this is an MCU. It kind of made me realize this is an adult MCU movie movie. Because this is the movie that we are seeing right now that it's an adult thing that's happening, right? Which is kind it's kind of cool. Again, kind of cool. But again, the movie was a good movie. It 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 kind of, you know, it, it set us up for the next phase of what's going on. So the deviants are here. They're trying to stop all the deviants. There's this one main deviant that's like sucking the powers out of everybody. And when he's doing that, he's evolving to the very end. And if you guys see the trailer at the very end, let me go uh, cue that trailer up and I'll show you guys that trailer again. But in that one part of the trailer, he's actually speaking. So... I'm going to cue that part. I'm going to pop it back up here in the corner. And then we're going to see. We're going to see that trailer. I'm going to extend this out just a little bit. And I'm going to pause the eternal soundtrack. We're going to play this right here. Then you're going you're gonna to hear right away. You're going to hear the deviant speaking. So listen. Any of them. So. He says any of them. So he he evolves from what the character that he was. He was just a regular four-legged creature that we were like, what the heck is this creature? To all of a sudden he's speaking. So it kind of reminded me of Age of Ultron. Remember Age of Ultron? Where he was he was just the regular Tony Stark creation and he evolves to like, you know, I have a brain. I want to do this and he wants to destroy the world. He wants to destroy earth. So that's what kind of reminded me of with this deviant right here, because he evolved to where he, he wants to kill the Eternals because 
for, you know, thousands of years, the Eternals was hunting them and killing them. But then now they're evolving. They're trying to stop the resurgence also from happening because they want to live on Earth, which is kind of like, okay, you want to stop. So it kind of made me like, why didn't you guys just try to stop Icarus? Because Icarus and Sprite towards the end of the movie was trying to stop the Eternals because they were trying to stop the resurgence. So it made me wonder why they didn't just team up. But again, you know, spoiler alert, if you guys are already into this, 25 minutes into this, you know, Angelina Jolie ends up killing the main deviant. Her character was badass, man. I want to tell you that right now. Her character, she was Thena and not Athena. And she mentions that later on in the movie. Not Athena, but Thena. She was this crazy killer. She can i mean she her weapons was just coming out of nowhere she would just like think of a weapon and it'll come out of her hand she'd think of a shield it will come out of her hand it kind of reminded me of um in dr strange how they can just form a a weapon right remember that scene in dr strange where they were like form a weapon form a weapon make a what it kind of reminded me of that like she took that that thing and made it better for herself and she she would think of a sword pop up a sword she would think of a spear pop out a spear her character was cool she did have kind of that mishap later on because her memories of the planets being destroyed kept coming back and she was at one point trying to kill all the eternals because she knew what the eternals was trying to do trying to have their resurgence but they found a way to, to tame her. They found a way to, you know, keep her tame, I guess you can say. Shout out to Mong Dong Siok, Gilamesh. Again, if you guys watch Train to Busan, he was the, the big guy in Train to Busan. So um, that was kind of cool to bring him in. Again, this char- the characters that they had here, man. Um, Haresh Patel, Karan, who played, again, who played the right-hand man for uh, Kumail. Kumail? Kingo, who played Kingo in the in the movie, he was hilarious. He had a camera. They were trying to videotape everything. They were trying to vlog everything. And for someone like me, who's a vlogger and who likes to record every little thing that's going on, having him on there was kind of a cool thing to have because it's kind of like, yes, you have another camera. Yes. And then they even say Sprite even says in the movie, how many cameras do you have? He had a lot. He had a lot. So that was a cool thing. That was a cool homage to vloggers who likes to have cameras and to like to have, you know, footage taken care, you know, taken at the right moment, right time. So that was cool. That was a cool thing to do for them. Um, I wish Selma Hayek had a bigger role. Uh, Ajax, she, she had a bigger role in the beginning of the movie. But again, you know, she gets killed off by Icarus because Icarus realizes that she's not going to stop the resurgence or she's going to stop the resurgence. She's going to do whatever she can for earth our earth remember the different universes our earth to survive um i mean it was a good movie it was a good movie again if there i would kind of wish and this is what i tell everybody i kind of wish during fight scenes i mean we just had the avengers right we just did endgame and everybody an exception to um chris evans captain america and tony stark Robert Downey Jr., everybody else is still around. We just seen the Falcon and Winter Soldier. We just seen Wanda. She's around somewhere. We know Doctor Strange is around. We know Spider-Man is around somewhere. So I kind of wish in certain fight scenes, they at least paid homage to one of the older characters. You know, maybe Falcon, maybe the Winter Soldier, you know, maybe Professor Hulk or maybe Hulk, maybe Bruce Banner. I mean, in the movie Shang-Chi, they gave us Wong from Doctor Strange, and at the end of the movie, they give us Wong, Bruce Banner, and Captain Marvel. So we kind of know, okay, this is the same universe. We're in this, we're in this universe together. And this is funny because I'm gonna t- I'm gonna tie in um, Shang-Chi with this movie in a minute. Um, but yeah, that movie, that movie is called the end credit scene. We, we get to the end credits. The movie, of course, they save the, you know, they save Earth. They stop the resurgence. It's kind of how the movie is. 
And then um, Ash, I believe his name, Ash is the big celestial that, that you know, everybody, um, Gemma Chan's character, Cersei and Ajax, uh, that's kind of like the big boss. He's the one that you speak to. He's the one that's telling you, hey, we are going to have a resurgence. We're going to get rid of Earth. We're going to start a new celestial so that way this planet will die and then we'll grow another planet. I mean, it was kind of weird the way they did this. You have to watch the movie. But um, at the end of the movie, the end credits, they show two end credits. One, they show Kit Harrington's Dane Whitman find his sword. And again, he's going to be a Black Knight. And, you know, that's supposed to tie in with, we don't know if that's going to tie in with Blade or if that's going to tie in with Morbius, who's on the Sony side, which is kind of cool. If you guys haven't seen my Spider-Man breakdown trailer, again, I'll leave the links to the comment down below. I also talk about who I think Ned Leeds is going to be in the Spider-Man universe. So go ahead and watch that. Um, but yeah, so Kit Harrington, Dane Whitman, Black Knight, it's going to be, you know, supposed to, if they keep it, if Marvel keeps the Black Knight the way the Black Knight is in the comic book, it's kind of like Game of Thrones. So I don't know how they're going to tie in Dane Whitman with, with Blade, maybe Vampire Hunters. I don't know. I don't know. So in the end of the movie, um, Gemma Chan, Cersei, uh, Fastos, and Kingo gets taken away up to space from the Celestial. Icarus is gone. He kills himself because he realizes he loves Cersei so much that, you know, he can't, he can't find a way to kill her. So he, he decides to just leave. Uh, Thena, Angelina Jolie's character, uh, um, Makari and Druig, they leave, they're on the spaceship and they find their way. They're, they're looking for other Eternals out there to let them know what's going on. So the other three, Kingo, Fastos, and Cersei are still on Earth. And at the end of the movie, we see the big Celestial take him, takes him by the hand and says, I will judge you and read your memories and I'll let you know if this planet is worth saving. So that's pretty much what he says. And then when they show the cutscene on the ship with Thena, Drurig, and Makari, a character by the name of Eros comes in, play, play, playing by Harry Styles. Eros is supposedly Thanos, Thanos' brother. But the funny thing is, he looks like a regular person he's not purple he doesn't have the prune face he's a regular person so who is eros who is eros he says he's thanos brother and he says i can help you find your friends they got taken away so let's help them back or let's get them back so that kind of shows us the eternals part two that's kind of like i guess what's going to happen with the Eternals part two, or they're, they're going to bring them back and they're going to do all that together. So I guess we'll see what happens then. We'll see. We'll wait and see, but it's one of those movies that I'm not excited to see part two, right? When we saw infinity war and Thanos snapped pretty much everybody out of, out of earth, we couldn't wait till Endgame to find out what happened. We couldn't. We all were like, oh, God, Endgame, Endgame. But when they, sh when they shown the end credits and they said, you know, we have to find um, your friends. We have to get them back. I was kind of like, yeah. All right. All right. If that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. I'm not interested in it the way I was interested in the, in the other, the others. I'm not. I don't know why. It's just maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just the way how I feel about Marvel. Maybe because Spider Man's coming out and I kinda wanna see what that universe is gonna be like. You know, MCU and Sony universe are clashing. So maybe that's maybe that's why. Maybe I'm more interested in Hawkeye, because Hawkeye's coming out on Disney Plus. I don't know. You guys tell me your thoughts, what you guys think about the Eternals, what the Eternals did for you what you like about the Eternals. Maybe there's something you don't like about the Eternals. Maybe the Eternals just wasn't what you expected. I mean, it wasn't what I expected. That's for sure. I mean, you know, I did expect a good movie. 
it just didn't, it was kind of like, okay, it's kind of like a build up to me of what's going to happen later on. It wasn't the best. You know, it wasn't the best. Is this the start of phase four? I mean, is this how we all felt when we first watched Iron Man? No way, man. When we first watched Iron Man, I was like, wow. And then the end credit scene there when they show they show Nick Fury and he's talking about starting the Avengers initiative. We're like, whoa, this is coming into fruition. The Avengers are coming. The Marvel Cinematic Universe's Universe started then. It's continuing now, but it's a new group of people. The Eternals. Are they supposed to be the new Avengers? Are they? I don't know. I mean, I can't wait to see. I can't wait to find out what, what they have in store. I can't wait to see if this is going to go the way we want it to go. Is it going to be what we want it to be? Or is it going to be something like, eh, let's wait for the, let's wait for the Eternals part two. It's a good movie. Don't get me wrong. Kind of glad I waited two weeks to watch it. I didn't watch it on opening night because um, I wanted the hype to go down. Spider-Man, I'm going to watch opening night. Don't get me wrong. Spider-Man, we got to watch opening night because we got to see who the villains are. and We got to see, um, again, listen to the podcast or the video down below when I talk about the Spider-Man breakdown. But what do you guys think about Eternals? What's your thoughts? Did you guys like the movie? Was it something where when it comes out on Disney Plus, because you know it's going to come out on Disney Plus, are you guys going to watch it? three or four more times or are you just going to let it slide and be like yeah 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 i don't know what what's your thoughts tell me your thoughts tell me what you think leave me comments down below i liked it it was okay but it wasn't the avenger movie or it wasn't the marvel movie that i was looking for and maybe that's what marvel is doing Maybe they're changing things around. Maybe they don't want us to think it's the Marvel movie. Like, you know, I even got my Marvel shirt on right here. Um, so maybe they're trying to tell us. I don't know what they're trying to tell us. Maybe they're trying to tell us we're going to do something different. I don't know. I don't know. I liked it. But, again, for how many years... We've been watching the same characters. We've been watching Chris Evans. You know, we've been watching Captain America. We've been watching Iron Man. We've been watching Black Widow. We've been watching Hulk. Even like Ant-Man. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Watching all that Doctor Strange. Even Black, Black Panther. Watching all that. Then we bring in these new characters that we have to... We have to it's one of those things like when you meet a friend and you're not sure if you want this person to be your best friend or just an acquaintance, but later on you've grown to like them and you don't realize, oh my God, I really like them. They're really cool. It's kind of how I feel about the Eternals right now. Yeah, they're okay. Yeah, I'll invite them to a party. But I don't want them to be my best friend. Not yet, at least. What's your thoughts? Leave me comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think. Again, I want to thank everybody who watches this on the daily, watches this, um, and also listens to the daily podcast with me, Eric B. I try to break down everything on that podcast, and I try to you know tell you everything here. Thank you guys who are following me on Facebook and follows me and watches the Facebook Live that I do. Um, probably going to do that once a week. We'll talk about everything and anything there. Uh, we could talk about the Eternals. I tried to talk about the Eternals the other night, but not a lot of people showed up. Ended up talking about football. Um, so leave me comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. Thumbs up. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Leave me comments letting me know that you guys liked and watched the movie. I'm getting that a lot from people, and these are strangers. And then again, you can follow me on the daily podcast with me, Eric B. Um, here, the Eric B's Daily Vlogs. I also have the podcast with Joe, the Ordinary Joe's podcast, which is coming back. It's coming back. I'm hoping coming back i'm hoping it's coming back joe i'm hoping it's coming back 
Also, don't forget to follow me on Patreon. Leave me a um, little donation is nice every now and then. Um, also, if you, um, you know, Patreon is too much for you, I do have a Venmo account at ericb1642. And I'm not asking for like 20, 30, 40 bucks. I'm asking if I get 40 people watching this video, a dollar a person, that's 40 bucks I didn't have, right? So, you know, if you guys have that, that'd be cool. Again, a Patreon, if you guys want to donate like 2 to $3 a month, that's totally fine with me as well. Um, but that's it. That's it. Until next time, guys, let me know what you think. Leave me comments down below. We'll talk about Shang-Chi. Oh, something I forgot to mention. In the movie Shang-Chi at the end credits, Wong says, I've never seen these materials before. They're not from Earth. I think they're from the Eternals. I think the Eternals is going to tie in with Shang-Chi one way or the other. I think. I think, but... We'll break down Shang-Chi next time. So until then, thank you guys for watching. The vlog's ended, guys. Go in peace. Again, you can download this soundtrack, Eternals Original Motion Picture Soundtrack by Ramin Dawadi. Dajwadi Dawadi. this.